All right, everybody, it's so good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's kind of a joke every year between me and some of the Chiefs fans about when I actually start covering the, the, the next offseason because the Chiefs play so deep into the postseason in most years. Um, so in most years, I've kind of either waited until right before they were done with the year or, or, or after they were done with the year, but just kind of crowds me too much, and I have so many other videos I want to do this year. So I apologize for those of you who don't want to think about the 22 off season while the Chiefs are still playing. I totally understand, but here it is. This is my favorite part of covering football. I cover a lot of different aspects, both college and pro. This is my favorite. This is the off-season stuff, the roster, the money, the decisions. Love it to death. There's so much to get in here with the linebackers. Looking ahead to the 2022 off-season. Let's jump right in. Willie Gay, Nick Bolton, Anthony Hitchens, Ben Neiman, Dorian O'Daniel, uh, and Darius Harris. Okay, Those are the guys we're going to focus on at linebacker today, starting with Willie Gay. Willie Gay... Had the injury during the, uh, during the tail end of last year, kind of slow getting back into it this year, but eventually with a lot of different things going on, he did get back in the flow. He's a quality starter. He'll be coming back for his third season. He cost you a grand total of $1.4 million. It doesn't come any cheaper than that. He's a quality starter with a chance to be playing at a Pro Bowl level next year, okay? No question about it. He's an asset in pass coverage. He makes impact plays against the pass. He is solid against the run, although I haven't yet seen him be as consistent against the run this year as he was in his rookie season, but certainly he has excellent ability against the run. He just needs to be more consistent in the running game. But no matter what, young guy, quality starter, $1.4 million, really cheap, has the chance to play at a Pro Bowl level, no question about it. Love Willie Gay right there at the top. Nick Bolton, number two, I'll say all the same things about him. Bolton might actually be better. Uh, not sure, but I think Bolton may actually be the better player here. Bolton makes impact plays at all three levels of linebacker play. He can get after the quarterback, chase mobile quarterbacks all the way across the field. He can make impact plays against running backs, not only in traffic, but even behind the line of scrimmage. And we've seen Bolton do very well in pass coverage. Now, is he dominating in any of these areas? He is not. He is a quality starter, again, with a very good chance next year, his second year, to be a Pro Bowl player. I don't know what the votes are going to be like this year. Maybe he even gets a look at Pro Bowl this year. I, I, I don't know. I'm not even particularly worried about it. But if you're wondering how good he is and how good he can be, Bolton right here may be the best linebacker on the team. And, and that's saying a lot because Willie Gay is, is a fine starter as well. But Nick Bolton cost you, again, a grand total of $1.3 million. He's under contract for next year. Matter of fact, you've got him under contract for three more seasons. So right there you have two quality starters with Gay and Bolton. That's, that's, a, that's an excellent foundation. That's an awesome starting point. Um, that, that's, that puts you in a lot better position for 2022 and beyond than most NFL teams are at right now, okay? Two young guys, very cheap, both playing very well as young guys. Both have the ability to become pro bowlers if they're not already. Uh, Bolton is playing good at all three levels. Again, he just needs to be more consistent. Now, are either of these guys just gonna step up and be all pros and just dominate the game? I don't think so. They don't have elite speed. Uh, they're not so big that they're just blowing up plays. But these are quality starters with a chance to become pro bowlers and stay at that level. So I love both of these guys together between them, $2.7 million for two quality starters. It doesn't get any better than that, okay, in terms of two linebackers. Now, the Chiefs play, like most NFL teams, the Chiefs play and like to play and kind of have to play so many uh, five defensive backs and even at times six defensive back sets that they really only need two starting linebackers, okay? Gone are the days, I, I mean by years, gone are the days where you had to start three linebackers and play them all year, and if you didn't have three starting linebackers, uh, you, you kind of had a weak spot on the team. That's not the way the NFL is played anymore. If you've got three starters, great for you, but you don't need that, okay? If you've got two guys, you are where you need to be heading into the season in terms of starters, okay? And again, you got to have the depth because the injuries are coming. You never know which uh, position group they're going to hit. We'll get into that. 
but they've got the two quality starters. They already have that. Signed, sealed, delivered, locked up, no question about it. The only thing that might change that is if there were an injury, but even if there were an injury now, even the worst of injuries for the most part take about nine months to come back from. Even the ACL, MCL, so they don't take a year, they usually take nine months. There will still be plenty of time for them to get back, maybe not for training camp, but certainly for the start of the regular season and work their way back in as the season goes on. So Gay and Bolton, starters locked up, starter one and two, whichever order you want to put them in, that's fine. So that brings us to Anthony Hitchens. Hitchens is making $12.7 million next season. That's a big cap number. Even for a good player, even for a good linebacker, that's a big cap number. You gotta really wanna have a guy on the team to be handing him that much money. How much is the NFL cap next year? 208, all right, $208 million. When you're spending 12.7 a clip, it goes in a hurry. It's like walking into a grocery store with $208 in your pocket and buying one item for $12.70, okay? You, you can get by with that once or twice, maybe three times, but you can't do that a lot, okay? You have to really want the item to pay the $12.70 for it, okay? How good is Anthony Hitchens? Some of us may just have to agree to disagree on this. I see Hitchens as a borderline starter in the NFL. I'm well aware of the fact that he has racked up a ton of starts in his career, particularly with Kansas City. Part of that is, however, that they just haven't had anybody better than him to put in. Hitchens is a smart player. He's an excellent tackler, okay? Smart and tackles very well, but he does not consistently make impact plays against the run, against the pass, or getting after the quarterback. He's not bad, he's not a liability necessarily, but he's also not going to make a lot of impact plays, and he's not so consistent at each of these categories that he's just a perfect, well-rounded player. He, he can be a starter in the NFL, but if he's your best linebacker, which he's not for Kansas City, but if you were your best linebacker, you would not have a good linebacking core, okay? We talked about that in years past. That's not new for those of you who, are watch, who have watched me before say that. Hitchens is kind of a gray area borderline starter. If he's your number one or two guy, you're kind of looking to maybe get better, especially if he's making $12.7 million. Me personally, I'm going to be deciding to release him, but we'll get to that in a minute. What I'm really focused on right now is how good is the linebacking group? Hitchens is an excellent kind of a, a gray area third, third linebacker, but you really don't want him being your top linebacker, one of your top two, and in this case, he's not. Uh, ben Neiman. Ben Neiman has become a consistent third down guy. They like him because he's consistent. They like him because he's smart. They like him because he knows where to be. But Ben Neiman is very limited athletically. His instincts are not the greatest. There are times where he gets mixed up in coverage and where he gets quite not quite where he ought to be. So Neiman is an excellent backup and he's good for special teams. He's played, I think, 65% of the special teams. So Neiman is a good guy to have. Uh, next year, he'll be a free agent. We'll get to him in a second. Dorian O'Daniel. 80% uh, special teams, doesn't see much time on defense, but Dorian O'Daniel, good athlete, very quick, good for special teams. He's getting about 80% of the special team snaps, so uh, he's a valuable guy. Darius Harris is a guy that we didn't see a lot of this year. I still don't know how good Darius Harris can be. I've seen some good write-ups on him, but I've seen some write-ups, some good write-ups on just about every guy on the Kansas City roster, okay? How good can Harris actually be? I'm not sure. Um, we'll see next year. I'm sure they'll try to bring him back. But how much of an impact player can he be? I'm still not sure about that. Um, I'm not covering Sorensen today because I, I'm really throwing him back in with the defensive backs because historically that's where Sorensen has been. Sorensen, I, I realize, is kind of playing that quasi-linebacker, quasi-safety role, especially on third downs and in special packages. He's a smart guy, but I'm not counting Sorensen in the linebackers today. I'll cover him when I cover the secondary. And Melvin Ingram, you know, you can hit a lot of websites that have Ingram classified as a linebacker, and that's fine. I will spend no time arguing about what you want to call him. But he plays on the defensive line. He gets after the quarterback. He doesn't spend hardly any time in pass coverage. He gets after the run. He's on the defensive line, so I count him as a defensive lineman. If you want to call him a linebacker, that's fine, but we'll cover him when we get to the defensive lineman. So I'm not covering these guys today. These are the six guys that I'm focused on at linebacker. You've got two starters. 
you've got a guy who started a lot, but it's kind of a gray area fringe starter, and then you've got some backups and special teams guys. So the depth isn't huge here, even as we come out of this season, finishing through this season, but you've got the two starters. What to do in the off season? 2022 comes around, what are we gonna do? Well, you don't have any decisions to make it a starter. You got your two guys, Gay and Bolton, locked up, cheap, you're good to go there. I'm not gonna spend any more time on that. You get to your first decision and that is Anthony Hitchens. Hitchens is a guy that I would love to have on the Chiefs roster. I would love to have him on any roster. Any NFL team I have, I would be more than tickled for Hitchens to be a part of it. He's smart, he's hardworking. Generally speaking, as far as I know, he brings a good attitude and he makes a lot of calls on the defense. I like Anthony Hitchens, he's a good solid tackler. But like I said, he doesn't make a lot of impact plays and he's not consistent. There are times in the running game where he's overrunning the plays a lot. He does not have the greatest instincts for a linebacker. Even though he does run out and pass coverage a lot, he, he, and his, his NFL speed is decent, it's average. Uh, he's not exactly shutting down people in the passing game, almost never, and then getting after the quarterback. You just don't generally see him making too many impact plays, hardly any impact plays and getting after the quarterback. So for, for me, fringe starter making 12.7, when they picked him up two or three seasons ago, I forget, they were hoping for a lot more than they got. Uh, they didn't get terrible but they were hoping for a lot more than they got. So $12.7 million would be his cap hit next off season. His dead cap hit would be 4.2. So if they want to release him, they've still got to pay him $4.2 million next year on the books, but the rest of it's gone. They would save, uh, I think, $8.5 million in cap space by letting him go, and that's what I would do. I would just flat out release him. Say, well, can you trade him? I don't think so. Uh, I, I would certainly uh, you know, ask around all the NFL teams but I do not see any NFL team even offering a sixth or seventh round draft pick for Hitchens, not because he can't play, but because of this right here, the $12.7 million. That, that's the problem. The problem isn't, can Hitchens be on a football field in the NFL? Absolutely can. He, he deserves to be, and he will be next season, producing for somebody. At $4 million, he would be valuable. He would be an asset. He would be important, okay? Uh, he, he would be perfect for what the Chiefs need next offseason. But at $12.7 million, no way. It's a burden on the cap that they just don't need. They need that money elsewhere, and you're not going to be able to trade him for $12.7 million cap hit. No chance. It's just not going to happen. So I would be releasing him. I fully expect that to happen. Uh, that creates a need. We'll get to that in a second. Ben Neiman is, is an unrestricted free agent. He made $1.6 million in 2021. I think it's well worth it to bring him back, and I think they can get him back somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, I wouldn't pay him any more than that, but at $1.4 million, $1.5 million, he knows the system. He's good on third downs. He's smart and consistent. If he had to play two or three games at linebacker as the starter, you're not great, but you're not, uh, you're not getting killed either. He, he's a good, solid player, and he plays a lot on special teams. So at $1.6 million, he's well worth bringing back, and that's exactly what I would do. I would re-sign him at $1.5, $1.4, $1.6, something like that. I wouldn't pay him any more than that. Dorian O'Daniel, same thing. Doesn't play on defense, but at $1.1 million, he's getting 80% of your special team snaps. The only way you get cheaper is if you bring in a rookie, and those guys are already pushing right around a million dollars per season anyway, uh, even for the guys who are drafted in the lower rounds. I, I think they're sitting somewhere around $850,000, $900,000. So you're not saving anything by letting O'Daniel go and bringing in a sixth or seventh round draft pick or even an undrafted free agent. You're not saving hardly anything there cap-wise. The smart play here is to bring O'Daniel back, let him play on special teams, uh, at $1.1 million, he's already signed for next year. I think next year is his fourth year, the final of his rookie deal. Uh, Darius Harris, he's an ex uh, exclusive rights free agent, basically meaning they can make him come back for, for, for pennies on the dollar uh, somewhere. If he makes the team, if he gets to stay on the team the whole season, they'd probably be paying him around $750,000, something like that. If he played the whole season, not even sure if he'd do that. So he may be on the practice squad, but I'd certainly bring him back to camp and let Darius Harris try to earn his way back onto the roster next year. Now, we know what we got. We know the decisions that, I, that I'm recommending. What does that create? What, what does that leave us with? Well, 
we're going to need somebody at that point to replace Anthony Hitchens, okay? And again, Hitchens would be perfect as your third linebacker for next season, but the money's all wrong. The money just absolutely cannot happen. I would have already done it but in previous off seasons, but they couldn't because the dead cap fit was so high. Hitchens would be perfect to bring back, but he's not going to want to play for $4 million. He's going to be personally offended by that, and I don't blame him. I would too. Can he make more with another team? I'm not sure. Here's the deal. You can get um, fringe starter linebackers, veteran guys in the NFL to come and be your third and fourth linebacker for anywhere from a million and a half dollars a season up to five million dollars a season. A team has to really love Hitchens to be paying him more than that next offseason. So can Hitchens make more than that somewhere else? I don't know, but he's probably not going to come back to Kansas City and play for four or five million dollars, and I wouldn't even want to do the five million dollars myself. So what I would do, I would go around the NFL and free agency and somewhere for three to five million dollars, I need that quality third guy. I need that guy who's going to step in and be the starter if, if Gay or uh, um, sorry Bolton get injured. I need that guy. I need the guy who's got experience. Some athleticism. He doesn't have to be insanely athletic, but need the experience, need some athleticism, need a guy who can kind of work out pass coverage. You're probably not going to get a guy who can get after the quarterback. Those guys get paid more money, generally speaking. He needs to be solid against the run. Somebody preferably better than Ben Neiman but somebody about as good as Anthony Hitchens, I can get that for somewhere around three to five million dollars. Let's call it four million dollars. I'm also going to need, I think just for depth's sake, I need a number four guy. I, I, I'm not totally happy with Ben Neiman being my fourth guy. And, and I like Neiman, but I'd be a whole lot happier if Neiman was the fifth guy on the depth chart, playing mostly at special teams and then coming in at linebacker when I needed him. I would love to see the Chiefs for about a million and a half to two million dollars bring in a, a veteran guy who's a little more athletic than Ben Neiman is. I would love to see that uh, for about a million and a half, two million dollars. Those guys are out there if Kansas City wants to go that route. Could you use a draft pick here? Absolutely. And, and I would love to see it. But you've only got six draft picks, six or seven, I forget. You've only got a, a few of those. I think there are going to be other positions on the team. They're going to grab those draft picks up. So I'm not recommending that they use a draft pick on a linebacker. But if you're sitting there and there's a linebacker you like that you think can kind of be that fourth linebacker, really provide depth, really really do something at the NFL level, not just occupy a roster spot, I, I, I'd, I'd jump on him in a heartbeat. I wouldn't hesitate because you, you, you can't always, the draft doesn't always work out your way to get everything that you want or everything that you need in every single season but they can get it for $2 million. What that does, if they let Titchens go and they eat the $4.2 million and they bring the other guys back like I'm recommending, that ties up $10.6 million of cap space. And if they get a guy for $4 million and another guy for $2 million, that's six more. And all together, that is $16.6 .6 million, okay? If you had that, the two quality starters, uh, a, good, a good linebacker uh, who, who's kind of a fringe starter slash backup, maybe as good as Hitchens for $4 million. That would give you the third guy. And then a fourth guy for legit depth. Not, not just depth because we drafted him or something, but a legit guy that actually can come in and play some snaps and not be a liability for about $2 million. Those guys exist. You bring that person in. You, that's basically puts you four deep at linebacker makes you somewhat injury proof, at least for short stretches of the regular season. And then you have Neiman as well as the fifth guy. That puts together an excellent linebacking core and your price tag is $16.6 .6 million. And that's not a whole lot more <laughs> than what Hitchens would have been making next year at 12.7, okay? So that would be an excellent price tag. Can they afford to do the four million and two million? under the 208 cap that they've got. I haven't actually crunched those numbers yet. I'll do that later and, and, and maybe I'll come back and revise this a little bit, okay? But this is not an unreasonable number. Matter of fact, this is very much on the cheap end. If you've got two quality starters, a third guy and a fourth guy, and then Neiman's your fifth guy, you have an excellent linebacking core that's got depth and quality. 
at an excellent price tag, okay, $16.6 .6 million. I'll just throw this in here. It's the last thing to cover. Stop trading away draft picks. I'm not against the idea of trading away draft picks. I'm not necessarily, I'm not so new English and Baltimore-ish that I just want to hoard every draft pick that I can get. But Kansas City, and again, six or seven draft picks, that's about what most teams have. So it's not like they're just giving these things away. But Kansas City has had a lot of draft picks pass through their hands. And what they've kind of done is bring in some guys that are, that are, that are supposedly supposed to be big-time players and make a difference. And I'm not sure those guys are making a big difference, to be honest. In fact, I think in some cases they're actually a liability. So I, I would be a lot more stingy about keeping my draft picks as we go through this offseason and in the seasons ahead. The reason for that is you have so many contracts, starting with Mahomes, but then going to Chris Jones and then Tyreek Hill and et cetera, et cetera, who are eating up large amounts of cap space. Those draft picks are valuable because they're so cheap. All right, if you get a guy in the fourth round who can be a decent starter and make this kind of money right here, you are saving a ton of money that is so important because it's already been eaten up by other contracts, all right? So this is important. I'm not trying to hoard every pick I can get, but I, I do in general want to hang on the draft picks. All right, I may or may not revisit linebackers throughout the offseason. Uh, again, if there was an injury, yeah, I, might, I might reconsider it. If, if this number changes, by the way, this 208 is not locked in. I think that's the highest it can go. It could actually go lower. Last year, the NFL waited until the last minute and it actually came out a little bit lower than everybody was expecting it to be. So the 208's not locked in. If you hear somebody say 220 or 230, forget about it. They're talking out of the rear end. They do not know what they're talking about, okay? Flat out, forget about it. It can't go higher than the 208. Might even go a little bit lower. If that changes drastically, I may revisit this. Once I've crunched the numbers and all the rest of the roster, I may even revisit my recommendations here. All right. Thank you for watching, as always. I appreciate it. Um, some of the numbers, by the way, let me tell you the numbers came from uh, Spot Track and Over the Cap. I use both websites. I love them both. You may hear criticism of either one. That's okay. Nothing's perfect. They're both excellent websites. I recommend that you jump in and look at both websites. Okay. Thank you much. See you next time. Bye.